Eight players whose careers were ruined by injury. Jonathan Woodgate. It seems like a lifetime ago when Jonathan Woodgate's performances for Newcastle earned him a move to Real Madrid. The plus side to his transfer is that he got to play for arguably the biggest club in the world. The downside is that he only did it nine times. To be fair, Real Madrid were signing an already injured player. It's a wonder how he managed to pass the medical. With a thigh injury ruling him out for the entirety of his first season at the club, further injuries limited him to rare appearances during a second. Although scoring an own goal and getting sent off in his debut didn't help, he was able to initially flourish when back in the Premier League for Middlesbrough and Tottenham before the injuries crept back in. Eight appearances for his country, what might have been? Dean Ashton. Alan Pardy was recently claimed that Dean Ashton could have been as good as Harry Kane. Now, while it's fair to take whatever that man says with a pinch of salt, there could be some truth to that. A prolific finisher for Crew Alexandra and Norwich City, big things were expected of the 23-year-old when he arrived at Upton Park. In the summer of 2006, he was drafted into the England squad ahead of a friendly with Greece. It would prove to be the worst thing that ever happened to him. After having his ankle broken by Sean Wright Phillips in training, the striker would never fully recover. He would make 40 appearances for the Hammers over the next four seasons before finally calling it a day at the age of 26. Michael Johnson. Whatever happened to that kid who Sven Joran Eriksson tipped to be the next Steven Gerrard at Man City? Despite bursting onto the scene as an 18 year old, he ended up being released from the club at the age of just 25. It wasn't because City had since become the richest club in the world, although that probably helped ease the pain, but more to do with the fact that injuries to his hernia and a recurring abdomen problem had hampered his progress. In his final five seasons, at Eastlands, he made just four competitive appearances. He now runs an estate agent's business in his hometown. Owen Hargreaves. All right, maybe it's harsh to include a man who won two Champions Leagues and played over 40 times for England. However, considering Owen Hargreaves' career ended at the age of 31, perhaps it makes his feats all the more impressive. Sir Alex Ferguson has called the 17 million pound injury pro midfielder a disaster and one of his most disappointing signings. Big words when you sign Masibo Taibi and Eric Jemba Jemba, with no sympathy for a man whose final appearance for the club ended when he was forced off after just five minutes. Minutes, Ferguson claimed that while the staff did their best for him, he created his own agenda. Bit harsh. Deadly King. Similar to Woodgate, King is an example of a fine British centre half who could have been so much more. A stalwart in defence for Tottenham for 13 years, the centre half managed over 200 appearances for the club, all the while trying to manage a dodgy knee. After countless operations, Harry Redknapp would reveal that there was no cure as there was no cartilage left. His knee would swell up after games and he rarely trained. The fact that a Premier League club would even entertain this for so long proves just how good he was. Abu Diaby. Ask Arsenal fans about Abu Diaby and you will probably hear a collective groan of frustration. It probably didn't help that he was tipped to become the next Patrick Vieira as soon as he arrived through the door. It definitely didn't help that the man was made of glass and would probably have injured himself walking up the stairs. A string of separate niggling and recurring injuries blighted his time at the club, making just 180 appearances in all competitions over the course of 10 seasons. Now at Marseille, he's taken up right where he left off. Jack Wilshere. Imagine employing both Diaby and Jack Wilshere for the last 10 years. Probably why Arsenal have barely won anything. The two of them must have been the best of friends by the end, considering the pair spent so much time together in the treatment room. Undoubtedly a brilliant player in his day. As Pep Guardiola found out six years ago, Wilshere should be stamping his authority on the Arsenal midfield right now, especially as Aaron Ramsey continues to flounder. Instead, he's in the Bournemouth treating room, nursing yet another injury after suffering a hairline fracture to his tibia. The poor lad just can't catch a break. Or maybe that's his problem. David Boost. David Boost is known for one thing and one thing only. Only, getting poleaxed in one of the most horrific injuries in Premier League history. The Coventry midfielder's career would end in April 1996 at the age of just 29. Two minutes into the game, he collided with Dennis Irwin and Brian McClare, suffering compound fractures to both the tibia and fibula of his right leg. The injury was so bad that the blood needed to be cleaned off the grass with water and sand. Peter Schmeichel reportedly got sick after witnessing it. Boost contracted an MRSA infection in hospital, had 26 operations, almost had his leg amputated, and retired a couple of months later. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.